So let's start. Uh, thanks again, uh, everyone, for joining today's webinar. Uh, we'll show you actually today how you can detect e-commerce fraud using Linkers and Neo4j. So a quick introduction to start. So my name is Mosan. I'm working uh, as business developer here at Linkers, and I am joined today by my colleague Elise uh, from the marketing team. So uh, the ad agenda of today's webinar is the following. After a quick introduction, we will quickly uh, speak about graph technologies and then uh, focus on e-commerce fraud. Uh, we will wonder actually why detecting e-commerce fraud is technically challenging. After that, we will explain the advantages of using Linkers and Neo4j. We will then have a demo focused on e-commerce fraud use case. After the demo, we will explain you how it works and finish by presenting you a real use case of one of our customers. Finally, we will have a quick questions and answer session. And uh, as Corey told you, please note that you can uh, ask all your questions during the webinar using the chat section, and we will uh, answer this at the end. Good, let's start uh, by a quick introduction about Linkers. Uh, so Linkers is a French startup based in Paris. Uh, we started in 2013, and today we are working with a bit more than 200 customers. Uh, actually, most of our customers are working abroad. We do work with organizations like Cisco or NASA, and uh, also a couple of governmental institutions like the French Ministry of Finances. Our Linkers Enterprise and Linkers SDK products help analysts extract hidden insights from graph data. So what do we mean actually by uh, unlocking the value of graph data? Our customers have data actually in various formats like Excel files, SQL database, and so on. The first thing is like they model this data as a graph of entities. This is called nodes or relationships. This is called edges. They then move this data inside the graph database like Neo4j, and Neo4j helps store and query large graphs. The linker software makes this data and the power of Neo4j accessible to non-technical users. With our easy-to-use interface, they can monitor, investigate, and detect insights hidden inside their graph data. So our customers use linkers to solve various use cases. For example, we have customers working on cybersecurity. They have servers routers application. This is something you can see on the screen. And they use linkers to detect and investigate suspicious activity patterns. With similar data, actually, we have some of our customers who are working on IT operations or enterprise architecture use case where, for example, they perform root cause anal analysis or data lineage. We are also working with governmental institutions who have access to emails, transactions, phone, call records, and try to detect and investigate criminal networks. This is called intelligence. Finally, most of our customers actually are banks, insurance, and money transfer companies who work on anti-money laundering and fraud. They are looking at connections between clients via transactions, personal data, financial records, and etc. The purpose, for the purpose actually of today's webinar, we'll be focusing on a specific kind of fraud called e-commerce fraud. I will now let my colleague Elise talk about this in more details. Thank you, Marsan. So, as mentioned, today's topic is about the graph-based approach of e-commerce fraud detection. And before we jump to the demo, we wanted to explore a bit this world and the challenges it raised for prevention and detection solution. So, first of all, when we speak about e-commerce fraud here, um, we refer to any type of fraud schemes that uses internet-related means to present fraudulent solicitation to prospective victims or to conduct fraudulent, fraudulent transactions. And those fraud schemes, unfortunately, come in many forms. Um, among the most uh, common schemes, we can find a friendly fraud where a merchant receives a charge back because the card holder denied making the purchase or receiving the order, and yet the goods were often actually received. There is also promotion abuse or phishing, 
which is a common practice of sending fake official emails to steal sensitive uh, information. We can find merchant fraud when a fraudster offers goods at very cheap price but never actually ship them. We also have account takeover when a fraudster is using another person's account um, to obtain products and services. We also have affiliate fraud, uh, which refers to any false activity meant to generate commissions from an affiliate program, or reshipping fraud, where fraudsters recruit a person to package and reship merchandise purchased previously with stolen uh, credit cards. And finally, uh, we have identity theft, which is the fraudulent acquisition of uh, sensitive uh, personal information. And those schemes are not the only ones. Dozens exist, and over the years we've seen that Froster keep renewing their tactics. And along with new types of fraud, we have also witnessed an impressive increase of fraud tentatives. Actually, in 2016, large e-commerce mer merchants lost up to 1.4% of their revenues to fraud in average, which actually accounts for billions of dollars worldwide. And there are several fa factors driving the fraud activities. The first one is kind of obvious. Um, it's the e-commerce growth. It has become mainstream and it's forecast to expand rapidly uh, during the next few years. Notably, we have brands pushing into new international markets. So, for example, last year, uh, e-commerce sales reached $1.9 trillion, and it continues to expand rapidly. The second factor that has benefited to fraudster in the past years is the adoption of new technologies and practices, such as mobile payment, bitcoins, or cloud services. Those actually offer new methods uh, for fraudsters to bypass existing security measures and to cover, cover the, their tracks. And finally, we've seen fraudsters organize themselves in networks and take advantage of it. They use the same resources, they buy ACT data from large bridge and they organize into groups across the globe. For instance, this March, the, the District of Columbia arrested like 19 people uh, taking part in various international online fraud activities that uh, has led to more than $13 million of losses. And one of the indictments was an online vehicle fraud where the participants falsified advertised cars for sales that they did not own. So, faced with this situation, e-commerce merchants have to turn to the fraud prevention solutions. And those web fraud detection softwares, or sometimes clue-based services, run background processes that can scan transactions and score them based on the possibility of fraud. Today, many solutions follow a layered approach that assesses activity at multiple levels and use multiple analytical approach. Most of them rely on the three layer displayed here. Uh, endpoint centric layer, navigation centric layer, and channel centric layer. So for the first one, part of the software actually scans information that encompasses client authentication, device ID, or uh, geolocation. The second layer controls include real-time dynamic capture of account and customer activity, and this is actually used to build a customer profile to determine what is a normal and what is an abnormal behavior for this particular customer. And the third layer is often channel-centric and monitor entity behavior across one specific channel. But for an efficient fraud detection, um, we actually have Gartner Enterprise advising us to add two more layers to the system. So the layer four and five are about connected analysis and they do require a technology that does not rely on a relational database model. For instance, the fourth layer is cross-channel and is dedicated to the analysis of abnormal behavior across multiple channels. The fifth one is entity link analysis, 
and it's all about analyzing relationships to detect organized crimes and fraud rings. So technology using only the three first layers can actually face some uh, technical limitation. So first, the monitoring and detection system cannot keep path with uh, new products or new, new schemes. Their structure is simply too rigid to allow the easy adoption of new rules or of new data. And secondly, those systems that exist in product and channel silo don't allow for a cross-channel view, which is actually something critical. They act on a transaction or account, but there is little or no cross-channel view of a subject behavior. And finally, uh, among those limitations, few systems are able to block transactions at the point of service, while at the same time, more and more actors uh, want to move all the monitoring as close to real time as possible. So, in order to tackle that and to avoid undetected fraud attempts, it's very important to implement the four and fifth la layers that we've just seen. And with Linkers and Neo4j, those connected analysis uh, approach became possible. So, um, about the, the, the fourth layer, which is the cross-channel centric one, one of the advantage of graph technology is that they can support analytic processes traversing all your data to find anomalies in millions of records. So the technology actually allows you to model all your data into one single graph and to add new type of data at any time. It is then obviously very easy to get a cross-channel and cross-product view of your client's behavior. And finally, you can easily combine it with external and third-party uh, data sources to improve uh, the risk assessment. So this way, transaction that initially looked innocent may reveal suspicious when correlated with activities in different uh, areas. On the entity link layer, um, linkers and Neo4j allow to analyze activities and relationship within a network of related entities. And this is essential to discover the networks associated with a suspicious account in order uh, to determine if it's a limited case or if it's part of something bigger. So you can use rule-based analytics to identify fraud rings and suspicious patterns. And finally, you can uh, uncover hidden relationship in your connected data. So now that we have a better understanding of the field, I'm going to let Mosan do a brief demo of what fraud detection uh, actually looks like with Linkers and uh, Neo4j. Thanks, uh, thanks, Elise. So yes, so we will now start a demo and detect uh, e-commerce fraud using Linkers and Neo4j. Uh, to do that, actually, we will first model our data into a Neo4j database. Then we will investigate entity linkage inside Linkers. And finally, actually, we will perform suspicious pattern detection and analysis. So the first uh, step actually is to model our data into a graph to load it into Neo4j. So for this demo, we have prepared a dummy data set. You can see our graph model actually here. Uh, what you can see on the screen is that entities appear as nodes. So I have uh, several examples, for example, credit card, client, email. Uh, they are all linked together by relationships. So for example, a client has an email address, he has a credit card, he has an IP address and so on. In a graph, we already have a cross-channel overview actually of our customer data. We have client information, transaction information and navigation information. We also combined it with external data, including a list of at-risk countries. This appears as a property on the country node in our data model. This is a very simple model that will be enriched in real life with more complex information, of course. And once the data, once the data, sorry, is in Neo4j, Linkers automatically makes it available via its interface. 
or we can start analyzing and visualizing the data into linkers. So as you can see, we are connected here uh, with Neo4j. So we have here like information related to the nodes, the relationship types, the property keys. And then we are going to connect to linkers. So linkers opens on your dashboard where your visualizations are stored. We have the possibility to directly explore our data set, searching, for example, for a specific name. So let me here like type uh, the name of one of uh, my customer. Let's say I'm investigating like uh, information related like to one of my customer called Abe Osinski. I have here like access to the to his email address. So I'm going to double click, and quickly I can see here the node related to his email address. If I double click again. I will here like also have access actually to uh, all the information I have regarding this client. So I have here his physical address, his IP address, his phone number, credit card, and here his email address where I started from. So the dynamic visualization interface actually allows me to explore the data connected to my customer. We have here our cross-channel and dynamic overview of our data. I'm going to Come back to the dashboard now. Actually, Linker's graph visualization can also help spot suspicious patterns. So we have actually here a couple of visualizations saved on our dashboard that display today's orders. So I'm going to uh, open one of these visualizations. Okay, so what I see actually today is the transaction actually of uh, today's order. Uh, we can see today's transaction with the entities and links involved. So I can see here like then with a credit card, one of my customers here like did three purchases. I have also the amount here. And what you can do also is like if I unzoom here, I have a full overview of all these transactions. And visualization are a first interesting way of detecting suspicious patterns in the connected data. So what I'm going to do right now is like I'm going to change the rendering to have here this with a hierarchical layout. Okay. If I zoom in a bit here, actually you will quickly see that there is, there is like some uh, interesting facts straight away I can see. And I, I can here like take a look at all my nodes and here like see like all they are, all they are connected here to my data. What I can do here is like I can also here like explain expand this information. So I will actually like um, put this in my best mode. Sorry, I'm going back to my visualization. So what I wanted to do actually is like uh, use this, select all my nodes, and expand to get all my client. I'm going to get all of them. Sorry, my fault here. Now we get more information. So what are we getting there? We are getting here actually all the nodes with the client connected to the credit card and connected here to uh, to hear the purchase they made. Uh, in a glimpse, actually, I can see that there is a different pattern. Where there is a different pattern? Here. Why? Because I have two clients using one credit card to make several purchases. Uh, so now I'm going to focus here like on this client. So I can use here my right click and select the toggle lasso. Here, I'm actually going to select only these nodes. And I'm going actually to hide all the unselected nodes. I'm going now to develop actually these links. So around the product, then to the address, then here to my client. So if I click on my client, I see that actually it's someone called Emily von Roden. And here, 
as you can see, I have first client, his name is John Purdy, and the second client name is Martin Ince. So what do I see? I see now that two persons using the same credit card to buy several products are, are getting actually these products delivered to a third person called Emily Von Rudden. So actually Emily Von Rudden here is probably a fake account and I might, I might be looking at a case of reshipping. So as you can see, um, graph technologies are efficient to look up at a, at a node and its connection and visualize a set of transactions. This is called entity linkage analysis. At the end, investigating the data is very intuitive. You understand in a glimpse or several accounts might be compromised and can take direct action. One of the first action I could do would be to update your data, which can be done directly inside Linkers. Let's say I want to flag actually this account. So let's say I want to flag Martin In's account. I can pass in edit mode and here add a new property. So uh, as a property, I can add, for example, potential fake account. So here, something already there. And I'm going to put as a value true. I'm going to save it. And by doing this, actually, it's synchronized in real time with the database. You can then have in parallel an automated tool that automatically blocks transactions from, for customers with the property potential fake account with the valor, valor true. Either if this property was added manually or by other means makes no difference and the result is the same. To sum up, what we saw is that we gra with graph technologies, uh, they are helping you actually as an efficient way to work with cross domains data and with visualization and analysis tool, investing, investigating sorry, the data is very intuitive. What we can also do is apply a rule-based analytics on cross-domain data. We can also actually apply a series of rule-based alerts to uncover fraudulent activities. So I'm going to come back to the dashboard. And here, actually, I'm going to go on the alerts. I'm going to create a new alert. So thanks to Cypher, a very easy graph query language, a developer or data scientist can add custom-made rules to monitor its systems. Linkers with the, will then automatically generate alerts based on these rules. The alerts can be easily reviewed by an analyst. I can add new rules as new data comes in. Let's say I've just added a list of at-risk country in my data set. And now I want to monitor entities linked to those countries. So I'm going to, to do that right now by creating a new alert. I will give this alert a name, at, at risk transaction countries. Good. Uh, I will here tap the query. To make my life a bit easier, I already actually uh, saved this query. And uh, now I'm going to select a frequency. One big advantage you have is like you can even select something super quick, so minutes. So here it will be almost direct here. One thing just quickly about the query. Uh, what can we see on this query? What I'm looking at? I have my client. Uh, so what I want is like all my client who have an IP address located in the city should be located uh, in the same, uh, if they have like information located in the same country uh, known as at-risk country, I want to get these results. So of course then the name is at-risk transaction countries. I'm going to save and enable this alert. Just clicking here once, the alert is running, you can see they're here. And now I'm going actually to take a look at the result of this alert. If I go in the alerts, I can open ask at-risk transaction countries. 
I can see that my alerts just happen right now. I double click. I have here the possibility actually of confirm or dismiss the match. I will explain you just after what's the purpose of this. But what I can see straight away, I have one customer. Her name is here, if I select this node, I have some properties. Her name is Fleta Greenhold. She has here a living address in Sweden. We can see this here. And what's interesting for me is that actually she has an IP address located in Quara, which is a city located in Nigeria. So that's something for me quite striking. And I can here now like uh, confirm or dismiss this match if I'm an analyst working uh, using Eclipse. So I will come back to the dashboard. So basically, what have we seen? What have we seen? To conclude the visualization, actually here the visualization capabilities of Linkurious means fraud analysts can quickly evaluate if the cases identified by the algorithm are either false positive or serious cases. This is what I was showing you with confirming or dismiss the match. And re re reviewing, sorry, it's difficult, difficult to say, uh, these cases with Linkurious before blocking any transaction can be very useful in order not to treat genuine clients like potential criminals and negatively impact actually their customer experience. So Linkurious also makes it easier for investigators to dismantle entire fraud networks at once by tracing their entire ramifications and not forget a key element. Finally, actually using the collaboration tools to communicate with other analysts and with the authorities eases the, the whole investigation and prosecution process making it one of the most complete graph data visualization solution out there. So I'm going to come back here to the quick presentation to conclude. So to sum up how everything works, uh, our customer here have data in various formats. They move it into Neo4j graph database. The linker server then connects to that graph database. You can then use the Linkers Enterprise web application to investigate your graph data. And you can use our SDK to add graph features to new or existing applications. So using our SDK, actually, you have access to the Linkers Enterprise API and to our Ogma JavaScript lab graph visualization library. Uh, one example, actually, here of what we did so one of our customers is actually uh, working for the fraud and compliance team of an international bank. They were facing actually an increase of credit card fraud online and their compliance team was also having difficulties detecting suspicious use cases. Today, using Linkers, they are now able to detect suspicious patterns and quickly react to block fraudster before they disappear with the money. So we are not coming at the end of this webinar. Thanks uh, for your time.